Been ready. I'm born ready. You're way over there, dude. I can't get any closer. <laughs> this dumb chair. <laughs> Somebody took your other chair. You're actually closer. You're closer. You're like you yeah, just look at I know. You're, you're over this. I know. Where'd your where'd your chair go? I don't care about the height. We can, that doesn't bother me that much. I guess we'll figure it out. Let's roll with it. Rolling. Welcome back to two guys in the Bible. Here we are. Cody, Take two. Cody's upset because somebody shrunk. stole his chair, and now I'm the taller one, kind of. For like 10 seconds but until in, we stand up. But in reality. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Do so, people like our bantering? I don't know. We I don't should, do it too much. So. We try not to. Yeah. But anyway, welcome back, guys. This is our second take at this take week's two. video because the first one, uh, something happened and uh, didn't turn out real well quality-wise. So here we are, back at it again on a Friday morning at... 5:52 a.m. Right I think now. It, I think it worked out better because now the debate's over and we can talk about the dumpster fire. Yeah, because that's what people want to hear about is the because the quality debate between two quality <laughs> presidential candidates. Because if they endured watching it, they want to hear people talk about how bad it was afterwards. Yeah, you know what? But some finally, most of America agrees on something. That debate was atrocious. Like whether you're left, right, yeah. somewhere in between. What did Ben Shapiro said? All of America lost. <laughs> <laughs> like if this is what we have, everybody lost. Oh man, yeah, it was. Um, it was not good. Now, like I told you yesterday, I understand. I finally understood why. Trump was interrupting. It was still over the top, and he shouldn't have done it as much as he did. But the debate, like the format, was terrible. There was no chance for any sort of rebuttal. Yeah. So Joe should. Biden could just say whatever he wanted to say, and then Trump had no opportunity to re to, to give any sort of rebuttal. And if he did, old Governor, Chrissy boy, Governor did. Wallace stepped in. <laughs> was like, hey. You know, be quiet. Anyway. Trump, stop being mean to Joe. <laughs> oh, man. It yeah. was, it was, but we, I think what we could conclude is this. We have come to the point in America where those are our two options. Well, this is a low point. I mean, think about it. I mean, border, like, Trump is, he doesn't speak well. He's not. I mean, we just had two people that have no business running for the presidency. And now does Trump do a good job? I think, I think Trump's actions are better than when Trump talks, better than when Trump... Yeah, his policies are better than yes, his absolutely. character. Yes, absolutely. Yes. But we can't even have a debate. Right. In a civilized... Well, I mean, even in the 16 primaries, it was the same thing. What did some brother tell me this week? God has given us over to a spirit of idiocy. And those were the two examples. Well, you know, at some point, like you've talked about this. I mean, we both have, but at some point, God is either going to call us as a nation to repentance... Or he's going to continue to give us over to a debased mind to do things that we ought not do in judgment. Mm -hmm. um, so, as Calvin said, when God wants to judge a nation, he gives them wicked rulers. And that's exactly what we have. I mean, no one is parading around that Trump is some moral example for things, but he... As we said, his actions are less immoral. His policies are less immoral than the other. Yeah. Um, and I'm okay with that. But I still just think if those, those are the two options, those are the two best options we got, we don't have anything better. And um, well, here's the thing. If we want anything better than Trump in our climate today, 
they wouldn't even they would they wouldn't even make it to the nominate the nomination for presidency. Well, yeah, I think we we saw that in sixteen. We had some candidates that were pretty solid. Yeah, in sixteen, and Trump ran away with it. And now do, he's do you up think against that, Creepy Joe, who runs on the for the party that stands on the platform of everything antithetical to the Bible, and he has a good chance of winning. Um, what, what do you think about this whole idea that um, they Trump speaks to the common person in America, and that's why he gets so much traction? Because even the common person might say, okay, he's over the top here, he's crude here, whatever, but he's not a politician. He's not just up there trying to wax eloquence over you. You know, he, he just... The common man in our country understands him and, and, and relates to him well. I agree with that. I don't know that it's a good thing, though. I see all people, regardless of what political affiliation you belong to, all people that are lost unbelievers, right, are still in that state of total depravity, mm -hmm. okay? Whether you're a left-wing dude, right-wing guy, somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. So what you have is you have two opposing ideologies. The totally depraved in the group on the left loves things like transgenderism, homosexuality, uh, abortion, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. The group over here that remains lost in their depravity likes Trump boat parades on the lake, drinking beer all day long, um, you know, stuff like that. I mean, they just have different things that they're into. They're all of it sin. Mm -hmm. But here's the difference. Biden, like I said a while ago, is part of a party that promotes, celebrates, and encourages things that the Bible clearly says is sin and, and evil. Trump, for the most part, stands over here in this other party that's more conservative, right? Has more reverence for God's law and the way we govern society and legislate laws and everything else. And therefore, I believe... I just don't see how a Christian can be consistent with what they say they believe and vote for Biden. Having said that, mm -hmm. I think a Christian can be consistent with what they believe and vote for Trump. Mm -hmm. that, that's the way I see it. Yeah. Did you fall asleep? No, I'm just, I'm just thinking about <clears throat> there comes a point where you've watched so many politicians go into and how many republicans and it st still happens to this day what do they run off of their greatest platform is they want to end abortion one of the greatest platforms they try to say they're going to end abortion and then they get in there and they don't do anything right because they need to use that right in the next camp campaign cycle and so i think that what people appreciated is they could look past this is what i told a friend of mine so you've got a guy you've got people who may decide to vote for a baby murderer, not that he actually has murdered babies, but he supports it, um, because he's nice. Well, he's just nicer. Yeah. Okay, he murders babies. Like, he's for that. Yeah. And so there comes a point where people have to look past the character flaws of President Trump and the annoyances, and the tweeting, and the loud, brash, obnoxious, you know, one of the funniest things that he That's said, that, one of the funniest things that he said in that deal was, Biden was making a point and said number two, and he said, you're number two. <laughs> but then they were talking about shutdowns. <laughs> I'm going to shut you down. <laughs> He's like, I'll shut you down. <laughs> 
I'm like, what are these two kids in the playground? Like, you're, no, you're number two. Like, My daddy whoop your daddy any day. <laughs> yeah. <and> we, <laughs> it's like, come on. Oh, but man. so you you look past that and you say, man, the guy has legitimately went in and tried and basically tried to do everything that he said he was going to do. Yeah, and, and that's why I'm like, you know what? This these are the options. As a Christian, I can justify going over here. I cannot, for, in any way, shape, or form, justify a vote for the other side. Well, and here's what I say. What you're doing when you vote for Trump, and if Trump wins, is you're just delaying the inevitable. Oh, which gosh, it, here comes your dames day. Which can be a good thing. It gives a window and a time um, of opportunity for... The advancement of God's kingdom, the freedom to preach the gospel, um, for Christians to not have to experience forms of persecution that we hadn't experienced because the left completely takes over and starts shutting down certain things. And so if you have Trump, you, you've delayed the, that and given opportunity for... Why do you say delayed? And why do you say that all oh, that's inevitable? God will not let this country not be judged. He will judge this country. There's no, I mean, this country is a cesspool of iniquity. Yeah, but all are. I understand. And what does he do? Yeah. He judges them. Yeah. He's consistent. And he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And just like Billy Graham's wife, it was his wife that said it. If, if God doesn't judge America, he'll have to raise up Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize. Well, he's not going to do that. Right. And uh, so, it, 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 now, do I know what that looks I don't know what that's going to look like. I believe that God will, and I believe that why God has not done it already, this is my personal thoughts, is because of the remnant of Christians that are here. Well, he is, in a sense, like, he does store up wrath. Mm-hmm. For the, the day of judgment to pour out on right. the ungodly. And so sometimes in this life, people that deserve divine wrath and judgment don't receive it. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, sometimes people can be an evil, corrupt dictator their entire lives and go pass away, never really experience any kind of judgment. Mm -hmm. But it's coming. And so, I, not that I'm disagreeing, but there could be a sense in which God is storing up wrath for the, those people uh, for the final day of judgment. And He may, in His common grace, allow the, still to this day the freest and most liberty-minded nation that's ever existed. And I would argue the nation where the biblical worldview is most prominent, even though it's full of depravity, but here it is still most prominent than it is anywhere else. He may, in His common grace, because of that, spare us. You could say, well then, so you're saying he's, He would do something different than like what He did with Great Britain? No, I'm not saying He will. I'm saying it, He... Because I could, I see. All us. I'm saying is we're, we're not one of those places that is completely uh, anti-God, anti. No, I, I understand that. Like that, even though we have many, many wicked people in this nation. Yeah, I understand what you're saying there. And I'm not saying he's going to not judge. He he will judge. I'm saying it may be in the next life, right at the. The, that day, the final judgment, where he judges us. Okay, people. and I—that's fine. Um, I'm also viewing it in the lens of like, when judgment happens on a nation, there's all, there's persecution that happens on Christians, and I think that Christians, what? Trump delays the persecution. Yeah, which is a form of judgment, even for the Christian, but it's. But it's also judgment on a nation because you're persecuting the very thing that is good for that society or good for that culture. You're seeking to suppress. And so those right. people are experiencing judgment. Well, Christians are experiencing persecution. 
which God uses for their good. Well, look, if there's no doubt about it. If the left gains power again, and they do what they're wanting to do, and that's expand the Supreme Court and pack it with liberal or progressive leftist judges, mm-hmm. where they strip away all our religious freedom and, and everything else, there's no doubt about it that's what's going on. Mm-hmm. But like, at least for right now, <laughs> we're still clinging on to some hope yeah. that... God in His grace and mercy, even though we don't deserve it, that's why it's grace and mercy, may spare us. Um, having said that, I think it's clear if the left gains power, uh, whether that's White House, Senate, Supreme Court, whatever. Um, I see us more ending up like Great Britain. If you if, just look at what happened, it just progressively went left, right, and just continued and continued and continued. I mean, the church looks like in Revelation where the where they're laying dead in the street, you know. Um, so, for a time. Now, it may be a short period of time, but if you go to Great Britain, it's almost ineffective, as of right now, is there, are they still moving forward? Of course, because God said His church will move forward. But they're not moving forward in a way that they had in the past. So, um, I think I could see we're, us looking. F- I could see us looking more like that. We're going a completely different route than what I thought this show would go today. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Oh, man, I'm, my eschatology is wanting to come out right now, but I'm going to withhold for right now because this is not an eschatology discussion. Uh, but it, it it does show this, though, how your eschatological view can impact, like eschatology just like the, the last things, right? The study of the last things. But eschatology is anything you think from this point on. It's all part leading up to that. And the whole point I'm making here is how, it's crazy how your eschatological view can impact the way you even think about current events right now. Right? Like when you said, like, the church, would you say, well, go laying dead in the streets, you mm-hmm. know, whatever, that, that imagery. And uh, I immediately, like, like, well, this is the bride of Christ. Right? How much do you love I want to protect and care for your bride, mm-hmm. right? You would never, if it was in your power, let anyone truly harm her, right? Well, how much more is Christ care and love for his bride? Now, there are times, of course, where he allows persecution to take place for his honor, for his glory, for the sake of the spurting of the gospel and the growth of his kingdom, but never his bride as a whole, he's not going to allow his bride as a whole to be beaten, right? He's not going to allow him. I believe when Jesus comes back, he's going to come back to a bride that has been victorious, mainly because of him. A bride that is without blemish, spot, or wrinkle. A bride that has... How do you purify something? The the Great Commission has obviously been... I mean, we all agree on that has been fulfilled. Um, A bride that has accomplished all these things because he has promised the gates of hell will not prevail. And when he comes back, he's coming back for his bride that will be full and beautiful. Is she now? Well, she's beautiful. But she's not... uh, Obviously, if... The Great does, Commission does, is not fulfilled, so it's needs, not done. It's not doesn't finished. she need the refiner's fire? Well, that's, I mean, that's, I guess, the ongoing sanctification, sanctifying work of the Spirit which within he would, the bride as a whole. Which he would use persecution. Yeah, like I said, to, sometimes to bring he about uses that. persecution um, for his honor and glory, for the spread of the gospel. I mean... The gospel wouldn't be where it is today uh, without people willing to be persecuted for righteousness' sake, right? Right. Um, during the first century, you know, you had Nero and Diocletian and all those. I mean, the church was ravaged. 
but yet that's the fastest the church has ever grown. That's what I'm so, saying. I'm not so, it, the the church is. You have to look and say, okay. You look at a place like Great Britain, and and really, I would say the the church here today. They're not ha- we're not having the effect that we're having that we've had in the past. It's not spreading like you just said, right? Yeah, but again, it is other places. I don't disagree. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm I'm not in other places. Oh no, this is what I'm saying. We're getting into eschatology, and it's gonna. But I'm just saying that we. Regardless of your eschatological view, you have to, every eschatological view can come to the table and say, the American church, understanding what's going on in other places, is going to experience things they had not experienced before. Persecution. God's not going to not judge the, the nation that we live in, which will in turn have a, an effect on the Christian church. He can't just let us keep. He's not going to let us keep going. He didn't let his own. He didn't let his own people in Israel keep going. That's true. He sent judges after judges after judges. I'm not comparing America to also, the new Israel or something, yeah. but I'm saying that he his own those people. But also in his grace and mercy, right, sustained them through years until they finally rejected the Messiah. Yeah, I'm not and saying that he, he won't sustain his church. I'm just saying that the church, it's not going to be all Skittles and bunnies. <laughs> of course not. You know, for yeah. the church in America like it's been. It's been pretty easy Yeah. to just plant churches, build seminaries, yeah, yeah, and go I don't, I'm, And all I'm saying is I don't think we can know that for sure. Um, it very well could be that, like I said, the left gains power and completely... Strips away religious freedom, um, persecutes the church, shuts down seminaries, and they're already trying to remove our platform online, right? They censor us and say, well, if you're going to talk about this, you can't talk about it on our platform, right? There may be, I mean, we do this show for YouTube, right? Mm-hmm. This is where we put it. There may be a point where YouTube just starts yeah. taking down our videos. I mean, I have no idea, but... They'd probably look at our numbers and say they're pretty irrelevant. <laughs> no, like so. Six people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll leave them alone. But anyway, election and then got ended up in this conversation. Well, I had brought up judgment, and then you just had to go all eschatological on me. Well, you know, just couldn't well, that's handle part yourself. Of it, you know. So judgment's a good thing from God. Sometimes we think judgment's bad. Judgment shows that God is holy, righteous, and just. Judgment is a good thing. We want a God. Who is just. Could you imagine a God that's unjust, willy-nilly, just doing whatever he wants in an unjustified way? Right? He wouldn't be God, obviously, if that were the case. So, are, y- but y- judgment's a good thing. Yeah. Well, of course it is. It's God doing something. Right. I just don't want to be involved in it. <laughs> like, I'm not raising my hand going, yeah, you know, judgment's good. I'll be a part of Sodom and Gomorrah because it's a good thing. Like, I, I'm i good with not being a part of that. I'm good with being brought up out of it and preserved from it. Which, well, we are in the, in, in the whole of things. Mm. Why? Because God being just, even though He forgave us our sins, right? He remained just because He poured out the punishment for our sins on His Son, right? And so, in the end... We may we may experience some of the uh, collateral damage, if you will, of God judging a wretched nation, right? But we as Christians, as believers in the Son of God, our sins have already been judged and paid for on the cross. And so, man, in the end, we're good either way. Come on, man. You're scaring the folks here. I'm t- so you want to not, like, so if I believe that it, that it is, is this. this life, what's our only hope in life and death that we are not our own? 
I get well, it. I know you believe get that, and you, you. You're assuming I don't. I, no, I'm not. I know you get that. I'm just saying that. Yeah, I don't want to experience divine judgment in this nation as a whole. But I'm saying, even if we do, we're good. I I understand that we're good as his people. I totally get that. Um, and I'm and I'm in full agreement that he's. Um. He's going to preserve and care for his people. He'll use persecution for the good of his people. What are you speaking into your your <laughs> mic like Biden? Your oh, sorry. What just, do I need to say next? I just forgot. Yes, uh, I'm Joe Biden. That's okay. Oh, forgot. Okay, I'll hit him with that one. <laughs> do you even love Jesus? <laughs> um, so I understand that the, the church will be preserved. When I'm talking about judgment, I'm talking about a nation of wicked people, because God said that His wrath is being poured out on the unrighteous. Yeah. I mean, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. And then if you read the rest of that, you and you look out at the society we live in, you see the judgment of God. And so what I meant when you see the judgment of God in that debate, like that's where you're, He's turning the wicked over to a debased mind. I'm not talking about yeah. the bride of Christ. I'm talking about <clears throat> because of that, the bride of Christ will experience something because of where they live, right? So because of the righteousness of the bride of Christ and the light of the bride of Christ, when men are turned over to more unrighteousness and darkness, that's going to turn and have a negative effect on light and righteousness. Yes. Right? They're going to, they want to put it out. They want to stop it. They want to right. suppress it as much as they possibly can because darkness hates light. And our, the light of the gospel, the light of Christ in us, um, it, it convicts them, it condemns them, and so on and so forth. And so that's why there's a, there's a negative impact on the judgment of God. And so, what has God done in the past? Brought revivals before and awakenings. Yeah. Where? And I guess that's where I'm landing the plane, is on that part. Mm. Like, even, man, even when nations and regions have been judged and faced severe persecution, um, true, authentic, great awakenings and revival has taken place. And that's what I'm saying. Maybe that's what we need. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, maybe I, in God's de- giving, I'm not saying that it won't happen. The base mind is something that will spark uh, a huge growth in the church. I'd just like it to happen before. Before the church, <laughs> yeah. I don't. I'm yeah. not. I'm not standing in line for persecution. And I, here's the difference, though. I'm saying it could, mm-hmm. it may, and you're saying that nah, probably won't. So that's, is that where the disagreement is? I guess probably. Yeah. I mean. So, but um, what else? Well, we told the people that we were going to do some theology. So we weren't doing any theology just now. We were doing theology. We were. This is going. I'm. I meant that in more Cody, of a. Are you a theologian? Yeah. Well. Yeah. Try to be. Um, yes, I am one. It's good, bad, or. On my way, I guess, um, to one or the other. Uh, think a good one. Um, so, yes, we were doing theology. That's why I think it's important. To, here's, what it, here's why this is important, and maybe this would be good to talk about, and then we can talk about this next time since we have went so long on the other thing. What CA and I just did was not, we didn't disconnect our theology from what we sat down and watched when we watched the presidential debate. Yes. And too many people in our country have a complete disc... First of all, they have terrible... I would say we have a large portion of professing Christians that have weak theology, At that's the best way to put it, to the other part where it's bad theology. And then you have a group that just totally disconnects their theology 
from life and from how they view things. I'm going to say this. If you're one of those people that believe you can set aside the fact that you're a Christian for whatever politics, whatever it is, it's because you're not a Christian. Mm -hmm. Because true Christians cannot set aside their Christianity. Because what you're saying when you say that is, I can set aside the fact that I know I'm a wretched sinner and that God gave His Son to die for me on the Mm -hmm. cross and Mm -hmm. pay the debt that I owed. That's what you're saying. You can set all that aside for the sake of something else. And so Mm -hmm. I argue that if you can truly set that aside, you're not a Christian. Mm -hmm. So we don't separate our theology or our Christianity from anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can go to the gas station and how the customer or the clerk is talking to one another. I'm interpreting this conversation from the biblical worldview, mm-hmm. right? Why are they talking to each other like this? Mm-hmm. What are they saying? Why mm-hmm. would they say that, right? Yeah, and you. So and so, some people have a theology of. And then some people do look at like what happened at the debate with a theological mind, but then they take things out of it like, man, I just, back to the nice guy thing. They come back and say, well, Biden was just, he was just, his character was better. And do we have a theology of character in the scriptures? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. But you can't isolate things either. You can't just pick this thing and make that the emphasis, right? And so... um so then they look over here and go, well, I like his character better than this. Okay, well, that's fine. And I would probably agree that on face, yeah. if I'm just observing whose character was more... Well, that was debatable because there's a few things. But anyway, that doesn't take away from other things that your theology should affect, like you talked about. The fact that there's moral things that that party is f- f- against. Like they're, they are immoral. Yeah. And so you can't disconnect those things and make an emphasis of one thing. Your theology has to be full, right? And it has to have a, you have to use the full counsel of God and observe all the things. That's why as I, as I grow in the Lord, you realize that when you're young and in your cage stage, you, everything's black and white. And as you grow, you do realize that you, there's some, you've really got to, when it comes to living out the, the area of render to Caesar what Caesar's, yeah. it's, it's, there, there's gray areas that you have to, to walk through and wade through. And you have to have all of your theology in order to do that. And if your theology is weak, you're just going to... Or limited. Or limited. It, it's going to be bad. You're going to make some bad, unwise decisions. Because yeah. wisdom is theology with legs. Right? It's, wisdom is the... the, the Taking the boat out of the dock. Yeah. The boat's the theology, and you've got to now navigate in this world. Um, and so I can't look at a debate and not have my theology begin to look at it and go, man, how, how do you, how do you, and too many people in our day are walking around and they're, they're, they're I mean, look at, look at the language of like the left. It's all emotions, how it made them feel. Right. Here's a perfect example, and this goes back to theology. How many people, everyone has an ultimate standard mm-hmm. that they appeal to, right, outside of themselves usually, when they have to come up with a reason for something, right? So if somebody came up to you or I and said, you know, why, why do you believe, what well, she's a big one, why do you believe that murder is wrong, right? Mm-hmm. Well, because God says it's wrong. Mm-hmm. And they're an image bearer of God. Everyone knows it's wrong. Their conscience bears witness. Right? We're appealing to our ultimate standard, which is God and His Word, right? But if somebody went up to an unbeliever and said, why do you believe murder is wrong? Well, they're like us, most of them anyway, would say that murder is wrong because you're harming someone else, mm-hmm. right? Well, then you gotta. Well, by on by what basis, according to what standard, do you believe that murder is wrong? Because mm-hmm. you don't reject, right? You don't believe in God, right? Mm-hmm. Oh no, I don't. 
uh, just society, mm-hmm. right? Or they're going to come up with something. But everybody has an ultimate standard. And what happens when your ultimate standard is not God, all you really have left is your own feelings, opinions, and emotions. Mm-hmm. And that's what we see over on this side. Mm-hmm. And when you're your own ultimate standard, well, then everything's arbitrary. Mm-hmm. There's no objectiveness to the world whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And I think why we brought this up and why it's important moving forward, any theological discussions that we take, like next time when we talk about the Bible, like where theology begins and where we get theology, is because we have too many people running around today that say stupid things like, I don't need theology and doctrine, I just need Jesus. Okay, you just made a theological point. Okay, which Jesus? It could, anything you say after that is going to be doctrine and theology. Right. Which Jesus are they talking about? Though? You need theology in order to worship God. Yeah. You need theology in order to love and trust God. You need theology in order to obey God. And so, it's in, and you need theology in order how to operate in society, in the world. Everybody is a theologian, bad or good, and I can tell you your theology by the, way, by the things that you do. So I had a conversation with my wife last night, and I, I shared some things about a decision that we were trying to make, and I read some things from the scriptures, and she chuckled. She said, don't, don't ever go, and she's just kidding. She's like, don't ever go to this certain Facebook page that she goes to where these women claim to be um, serious the, theologians, yeah. right, with that stuff because they don't like that. And I said, well, I can tell you right now, their theology is bad. Yeah. I don't care what they say. They might be able to quote the Westminster Confession, but if they're against what I just read, their theology is bad. Yeah. And so we have, I can, you can tell where someone is at theologically by the way they operate in society, by the decisions that they make. It's amazing to me that we're even having a conversation, like you've said so many times, about Christians Wondering, oh, can, can I vote for this side or vote for that side? What are you talking about? No. Yeah. I Why mean, is this even a discussion? Do you read your Bible? <laughs> Do you know anything about I mean, like, I mean, <laughs> right. so, sometimes it goes, it comes, I just want to look at people like, do you read your Bible at all in any f- form or fashion? <laughs> now you can download apps on your phone. Somebody else will read it to you. Right. <laughs> so I'm like, man. And so it just, it, it's amazing to me. And then to hear the same people, oh, that theology stuff, it's just, okay, then you're going to operate in this society in a way that is completely unbiblical and not pleasing to God if you don't, and you're not going to know how to weed through so much of the stuff yeah. if you don't have a proper, and we're not going to be able to give you a full proper theology, but we're going to give you it in bite-sized form for you to go and try to go further in each one of these these topics and next week the first one it has to start with where it all comes from and it comes from um this book scriptura scriptura (laughs) yeah yes yeah this is again yeah so next week we'll begin our bite size theology Mm -hmm. right we're going to begin with the sufficiency and the authority of scripture Mm -hmm. Uh, because everything we're going to learn about theology uh is found right here. Right. And uh, here, here's the thing, Christian. Stop making up what you believe. Yeah. Just stop. If there's something you're wrestling with or don't know, find it in here or and ask your pastor. Um, but if your you pastor, pastor says pastor he doesn't that, like the, theology, yeah, if your pastor find doesn't want to sit and have these kind of discussions or anything like that, uh, find another pastor. Yeah, find a new one. Graciously, lovingly, find a new one. Yeah, graciously, don't be rude, but um, this is what we're called to do. We're called to feed and tend to our sheep. And uh, the way we feed them is give them this. Mm. The way we tend to them is care for their souls, Mm -hmm. care for them as people, love them, and shepherd them. Right. But until next time, we hope that uh, you're doing well. 
Um, we, were, we do want to remind you about our conference in October. It's the, October the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Uh, for Cody. You can share the, you're going to share the link. You can put the link at the bottom for the Facebook. The link? Is that how that works? You link it, Seth. <laughs> what do you is that do? A thing? Is that is that so? I just hear people say that word. Are we going to set up a MySpace? I say page? words. I say the best words. <laughs> Cody wanted to set up a MySpace page. For it. Is that a thing that we do? Do we do we still MySpace? Cody still has AOL Instant <laughs> Messenger on his computer. I don't even have a computer. That's no, great. yeah, I can do that. I can share a link to the, our, the Facebook page, page where it'll be streamed live if you can't join us. And all the person. and there'll be some things we're going to put on there in the next few weeks of yeah. information and stuff like that. So, all right. Well, Cody, go ahead and hit them. Well, we just pray that you guys, from here on out, the rest of the today and the rest of the week until we see you again, that whatever whatever you find yourself doing, whether it's eating or drinking, uh, do it all for the glory of God.